All right, what's going on dudes and welcome back to Minecraft. About a year ago, so for those of you who've stuck around for a while, you may recall me taking a look at a mod called Pokemobs. Super cool. Added Pokemon into your Minecraft game and lots of people seem to like it, considering it is the most viewed thing on my channel that's not a music video. But at the time, the functionality of it was pretty limited. It allowed you to capture the Pokemon, level them up with rare candies, and evolve them, but that was pretty much it at the time. So today we'll be taking a look at a mod called Pixelmon. I think it's by different creators, however it totally expands upon what you were able to do with the Pokemobs mod. So why don't we jump in? I'm going to be playing on a Hoenn recreation from the Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald generation of Pokemon, just to sort of get in the mood here. So why don't we start off? So, as we join into the world, we'll be greeted by a screen that asks us what we want to choose as a starter Pokemon. So, already more true to the actual game. So we can choose Bulbasaur, Squirtle, Charmander, or uh, Eevee. So that's a, a new addition, but because I always played with Charmander in the uh, first generation, I'm going to choose him because he is lovely. So anyway, we can ignore this. It's uh, sort of an advent a Pokemon adventure map, but we'll just be using it for the scenery. And, um, so let's head up in here. I think our, our mom is, is sort of waiting for us here. Be careful on your journey, son. Take the super cookie. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, as you can see, Pokemon theme inspired. And, uh, but as far as the mod goes, over in the right-hand corner, we've got a little bracket that at the moment shows our Charmander, uh, Charmander sprite avatar whatever you want to call that little image. If we hit the P key, we can throw out our Charmander. Well, not actually toss him into the trash, but we can uh, toss him out and he'll actually follow us around. By default, once we get far enough away from him, he'll go ahead and catch up to us and pretty cute, pretty cute boxy Charmander. We can recall him by pressing P again and we can also expand that little uh, inventory screen by hitting the O key, and then we get some stats about the Charmander. He's level 5, he has 19 out of 19 HP, uh, so on and so forth. Alright, so now why don't we go ahead, i close up that inventory screen just so it's not obscuring the screen, and let's try to find some, uh, some other Pokemon. They're actually kind of rare. They're not just all over the place, so we have to take a look around. So why don't we switch on over into creative just so we can fly around. And hopefully we'll be able to find one pretty quickly here just to give a nice little demonstration. Alright, so here we've managed to find a Pokemon. I don't recognize it because it doesn't seem to be from the original 151. It's a Militank. So it's a little midget cow thing. That's interesting. <laughs> I don't know if I've mentioned before, but I'm really only most familiar with the original 151 and then most of the ones from the Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald versions. Anyway, they're kind of a bit skittish when you walk up to him in the wild, but this guy doesn't appear to be running away too much. So why don't we do battle with him? He's going to absolutely destroy our Charmander, but it's worth taking a look at for the uh, battle GUI screen. So it works via proximity. You throw out your Pokemon within a certain range facing the enemy or the wild Pokemon, and this screen is going to show up and you're going to do battle automatically. You can choose to run if you want, but obviously we want to give a demonstration here. What's obviously going to happen is we're going to choose Scratch. His agility is going to be higher than ours, and he's going to probably one-hit KO us. So, anyway, you'll get to see the attack animation at least. Here we go. And... Takes a few seconds. Sure enough, he used a non-damaging attack on us, so that's nice. He upped his defense, I think. And, uh... Well, we got to scratch him. So he did uh, two hit points worth of damage. Well, anyway, at least you got to see the uh, the exchange right there. Now, no matter what attack you choose, the animation is the same, but it at least shows that uh, an attack was thrown, and you obviously get the text down there in the bottom left-hand corner. Let's try Scratch again, and this time he's probably just going to stomp us into oblivion. There we go. Our Charmander was KO'd. So now you see in the inventory screen, Charmander, level 5, fainted, and he seems to just be jumping around for joy. Take that! <laughs> I could hit you myself because you can't fight back. Well, anyway, now's a good time to demonstrate the healing machine, so pretend we're at a Pokemon Center here. Actually, we should just go into one. Why don't we? Let's walk on into the Pokemon Center and pretend that the healing machine is already there. This, again, is craftable. You can find the recipe 
on the uh, the page linked in the description. Once you put it down, you can right click on it and then click heal and voila. Charmander is getting healed slowly but surely. And then we can close it up and he's back to full health as he was before that battle. Well, fair enough. Now, why don't we give him sort of a fighting chance? We'll use the rare candies on him, level him up, and then we'll try to find that Militank once more and see if we can't uh, have a better battle. So let's go ahead and throw him out, right click on him with rare candies, and you'll notice in the bottom left hand corner, it tells you his level ups, how many EXP he's been gaining, and we'll let's try to level him up to the, yeah, so he uh, gets one more ability. So let's see. I don't think we need smoke screen. And now, voila, we have a Charmeleon. So now it should be a pretty even battle, if I do say so myself. All right, so let's recall him. And now, Mr. Militank, we're going to have a rematch here, aren't we? If I can catch up to him so he lets me uh, battle him. Here we come on. Oh, now he's scared. Oh, now he's all scared. <laughs> he knows he doesn't stand a chance. So, huh. there we go. All right, so let's use Ember and see what that does to him. There's the attack animation. Apparently, his agility is still higher than ours, but we, we were able to do some good damage. Surprisingly, he did more to us. Uh, well, let's try Ember again. He's probably going to attack first unless he... Oh, he used Defense Curl. Fair enough. And now we hit him one more time. Okay, we'll do one more attack on him. And then we'll actually attempt to catch him. So I'm not entirely sure if it works identically to Pokemon in that the more you weaken the wild Pokemon, the, the higher probability you have of catching it. But it would make sense. So let's go ahead and we'll actually run. But even if we run, the health is still going to stay as it was on the wild Militank. So, as you'll notice, his health is still... Oh, I, I can't escape. <laughs> this guy wants to keep us in his clutches. So, actually, this would be a good time to demonstrate the fact that killing an enemy Pokemon is a tad bit bugged. So, let's use Ember. Hopefully, we'll be able to do an attack on him before he kills us. And, uh... There we go. So, now we just killed the Militank. And it shows in the bottom corner that we gained 739 XP. We leveled up to level 17. Um, what does he want to learn? Dragon Rage, which it looks like he already has. So that's interesting. Uh, <laughs> but strangely enough, the dead Militank is still walking around. So a little bit bugged. But anywho, what it allows us to do is go into our inventory here. Again, all the Pokeballs are craftable, but... Why don't we try using a Great Ball? So we're going to throw a Great Ball at the dead, but the undead Militank. And uh, again, works by proximity. We can get close enough to him. We're going to throw it at him. Attempt to catch him. It'll have the rocking animation. And sure enough, even though he's dead, he was able to escape the clutches of the, of the first Great Ball I threw. <laughs> and the second one. And the third one. Just to speed things up a bit, we'll go and throw out a master ball here and uh, just ensure his capture right quick there we go and obviously 100% capture rate he will be ours so there we go we captured Militank and now you'll notice he appears on the left hand of our screen in our inventory we can hit O brings up his stats 49 out of 50 for whatever reason he regen the health that he lost in the battle, but maintained that damage that I did by punching him. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> but still, now we have two Pokemon in our inventory that we're able to use. Now, if you want to, if you notice in the upper left, it's uh, highlighted on the Charmeleon right now. But if we want to switch and throw out the Militank, we can use the bracket keys to switch between our inventory like so. Now, if we hit P with Militank selected, we'll throw out the Militank and again... Hit P once more in order to uh, recall him. Well, let's we'll switch back over to our Charmeleon. And we're actually going to change the difficulty because I don't really want to deal with the mob spawners that are here in this uh, Pokemon map. So at this point, I figure we should try to just look around a bit more and see if we can't find 
few more Pokemon to catch, fill up our inventory, and then we can demonstrate the, uh, the PC screen. So funny enough, out of bounds, <laughs> over the wall where you're not supposed to be able to get to, there is just a whole plethora of Pokemon around here, even a Snorlax. That thing just spawned, so that's cool. So why don't we go at two Snorlaxes? Let's go ahead and fill up our inventory by throwing Master Balls at all these guys. I don't know where exactly the hitbox is on him. There we go. We are just gonna fill up on everything over here. Come on. So we captured Arbok. Again, he's gonna appear in our inventory. We're about to capture either Electrode or Voltorb. I'm not sure entirely which one that was. I think that was a Voltorb. Let's capture the Electorb. Electrode. <laughs> Get the two names mixed up all the time. And oh my god, it's a Pikachu. Let's capture Pikachu. Here you go. There we go. We got a Pikachu. And now, once we collect one more, it should go ahead and overflow on into our PC inventory. So, going to throw the Master Ball at Mr. Snorlax here. And if I can get it within range of him, he obviously has a pretty small hitbox despite being a very large model. Alright, so. There we have it. Captured Snorlax, but obviously a party is full, so it's going to be sent to our computer. So why don't we, well... Take a look at what the computer is. Computer is very easily crafted. It only requires one dirt block to create, but we'll go ahead and fetch it in the creative inventory. You simply put a dirt block in your workbench or your in-head inventory and out pops a computer. So place this thing down, right click on it, and you'll notice the Snorlax is now in our inventory. You got multiple boxes, so you can overflow, capture as many Pokemon as you want. I think at the moment there are 77 that are modeled and in the game. So quite a bit versus what was available back in Pokemobs, which is like 10 or so. So now if we want to rearrange our Pokemon inventory, we can easily do that. If we want to fetch our Snorlax in place of whatever else is in there, we can totally do that as well. And that's basically what you got on the computer screen. Now, another tool is called the PokeChecker. So why don't we throw out the Snorlax? Press P. Throw them on out. And again, I didn't mention before, but you notice in parentheses there's wild and uh, parentheses Captain Sparkles, meaning Pokemon belongs to me or it's tamed to me. So now if we choose the item that's first in our inventory that looks like a bag of candy of sorts <laughs> and right click our Snorlax, it shows us all his stats, it shows us the moves he has, and we can change his nickname as well if we want. Um, Big Buddha, because he kind of look, he kind of reminds me of Buddha, and I think I totally spelled that wrong. There we go. So now, <laughs> back in the game, and instead of being called Snorlax, he's called Big Buddha. Doesn't he totally look like a Buddha? Happy, tubby, totally, man. All right, well, now we can recall him. So I figure before we head out, we can do one last battle of a level 50 Snorlax versus a Drowsy, that's a fantastic model, I might add, by the way. So let's throw him out. And Big Buddha. Apparently that was not within the correct proximity, or maybe Drowsy was simply looking away. Do battle! So Big Buddha has 183 hit points, and Drowsy, poor guy, has 44. Oh, it's not going to go well for him. <laughs> Terribly sorry, man. Uh, let's use Tackle. And probably one hit KO. Yeah? Yeah? Oh, one kit hey one <laughs> One kit hey -o. One hit KO. But sure enough, he's still running around. Uh, may as well try the Great Ball on him. Just for kicks, we can recall our Snorlax. And still didn't catch him. <laughs> I think they, uh, a little bit of, again, as I said before, a recalculation of the capture probabilities would be nice. But hey, just as I say that, Fair enough, we capture him with a great ball. So there we go, that's a legitimate battle to capture. So, unlike in the actual game, you don't actually have to worry about accidentally killing the Pokemon you're trying to capture. At least for now, that may be fixed later on, I wouldn't be surprised, but for now you get the luxury of just taking him down to zero health and then um, capturing him. So, anyway, that's about it for this mod for now. Hope you've enjoyed watching and uh, 
I guess I'll look forward to the future updates. Again, if you want to see more about the mod, you can follow the link in the description to the mod page. Other than that, if you've enjoyed, ratings would be much appreciated. And I'll see you next time.